guys and welcome back to the pig room or welcome to the pig room if you are new here. Today we are going to be taking Caroline and Wanda to the vet. This is going to be a weekly vlog for you guys. But we're starting off with another vet visit. I feel like I've been at the vet way too much this month. Probably only twice, but to me that's a lot. But they're going for their second recheck. They're over there just sleeping in their piggy bunk beds. And then Wanda's on the outside just laying next to her. But as you guys may or may not know, in case you have not been following my Instagram and all my updates there, Caroline and Wanda have gotten bronchitis. Now, if you guys don't know, that is actually the before stage of a URI, upper respiratory infection, which Caroline and Wanda have actually had before in the past. They are just piggies who are prone to that. So luckily, I caught it early and they've been on antibiotics for the last two weeks. And hopefully, with today's vet visit, the vet tells me that they're completely cleared. My main concern is Caroline because she's the one that always has has the most amount of symptoms so fingers crossed and hopefully we get a successful clear bill of health but right now I am just packing their carriers I just have a pee pad and then some hay for them to munch on it's about a 10 minute drive so it's not super far but it's nice to have something to snack on since they need hay all the time but I gave them a good wipe down with vinegar and water because Winston and Vision were in here last time when I took them for their pre-consultation for their neuter I do wish I had one big one where I can put them both in at the same time so they could have company but my pigs don't really get super stressed out in the car nothing really major happens especially with it being such a short drive so they definitely do well in the car for the time being when we go to the vet here we have wanda's it's super dark but as you can see in the back we have some hay in the back and then we just have two pee pads to keep them extra cozy during the commute i'm gonna go ahead and actually put them in the carriers and then we'll be on our way to the vet all right guys so we just pulled up to the vet um i always have to call them before like i go up there and walk in um, just because they're still following the COVID protocol. So it's only one owner, you know, per pet. So I'm just waiting for them to give me a call. Um, she let me know that someone's in there before me actually saying goodbye to a pet. Um, so my appointment's running a little bit behind, but obviously fine. You know, my pets are doing a lot better than this case. So we're just waiting in the car until they give us a call saying for us to come in. I'm honestly fortunate that I have a vet and exotics for that case, like right by me. I know that for some people, depending upon where they live, sometimes it can be a full hour drive to actually find an exotics vet and get one. So I'm definitely lucky in that sense. Plus I have multiples around me, which is really good. I actually have one that's about 15 minutes from me this one's 10 minutes and then i have another one that i've been to that's about 40 minutes so it's really nice coming to this one because it's super close now it is a little bit more expensive which kind of sucks but then again you know it is kind of worth the price in my opinion just because i do have a really amazing vet and she takes really great care of them um, and is also super passionate about pigs so yeah we're just going to wait in the car for a little bit we have been feeding them the really good hay pieces, like all the heads, and they've just been snacking on it. I'll put a little clip of Caroline snacking on it, but they're just enjoying themselves. Wanda is just right here. We just open them up as well so they can kind of chill out and not feel like so enclosed, but they're just having a good time, just relaxing with us. The AC is on as well because it's getting super hot, so they're nice and chill, which is good. Alrighty guys, I am back home now. I've been home for like the last I want to say three hours, but I'm just now turning on my vlogging camera to update you guys about how their vet visit went. Sorry, I'm trying to balance this right now. You guys are on literally top of my sewing machine, so this is probably not the best spot to put you guys. Is that okay? I think so. The vet visit went really well. Caroline and Wanda are completely clear, which I'm really, really, really happy about. They did another x-ray on Caroline and came back totally normal, so that brings me peace of mind. But I did actually forget to mention, and I noticed last night on Wanda, that she had a little bit of a lump bump, whatever you want to call it, cyst for that matter, um, on the back left hand side right near her butt. And the vet actually had spotted it out before I mentioned something. I actually completely forgot. So thank God she found it and reminded me. But Wanda actually does have a little cyst on the back side of her, which is going to have to involve surgery. I'm not sure of when I want to schedule that. It's nothing major. It's not cancerous or anything like that. It's just a, I guess, a pus filled cyst. So it's not causing her any pain, but definitely through time it can get bigger and bigger. So it's a much better procedure to remove it when it's smaller. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that scheduled probably within the next couple weeks. I definitely wanna do Winston and Vision's neutering before Wanda's. This is gonna cost me close to 1K for Wanda's surgery. So now I've got three pigs undergoing surgery, which is definitely not the best. Um, well, two of the three are good for other reasons, um, but Wanda's going to have to get a I guess non-cosmetic surgery, I guess you wanna say. So yeah, that is kind of the rundown as far as what is going on with my pigs, but 
so happy to finally say that Caroline and Wanda are completely cleared of their bronchitis because giving pigs antibiotics for two weeks is definitely not the most fun, but they're all good. Vet said they're fine, so we are good in the pig room health-wise, but I just wanted to quickly open up some packages with you guys because I just had two of them come in. I was getting ready to clean the cages, then I heard a knock on the door, and lo and behold, I got two packages uh, related to the pig room. So right here, can't show you guys everything. I've just got my stickers that go actually on my packages on the outside and also to enclose my mailers when I send you guys the stickers. So I just wanted to give you a little show and tell, if you will, a sneak peek into the business side of the pig room. So these just come in sheets. This is actually the biggest order that I've gotten from this company. Oh, I think they took one from <laughs> this sheet right here to actually put on the front of this. That's so weird. Um, I'm sorry, I dropped it. <laughs> These actually are glossy. These are different than the ones I typically order, but I like these so much more. These are really nice. They're like a glossy sticker. Let me actually take one off so you guys can see. Why haven't I gotten these sooner? Yeah, so the ones that I typically get are like a matte version of these, but these have a really nice, like very thin sheen to it. So this is super, super cool. I'm really happy with this. I did not mean to order this finish, but I'm really glad that I did. Sometimes mistakes are good because the universe will bless you sometimes. So I got 500 of these. Um, they come in so many sheets. It's just filled in right here so that is that and then the most exciting oh my god I almost dropped you guys again and then the most exciting package which I have been waiting for over a month for because they've been in production for quite some time now are my business cards these are custom business cards and I feel like it's just better to show you guys so I yeah I've been waiting on these for so long now that I'm really glad that they're finally here production took a really long time for them and then actually Let's find somewhere else to put you guys. Okay, you guys are going to be standing on top of my thermal printer because I'm not risking you guys falling over again. So, sorry if my head is cut off, but for the safety of my camera, we are going to... Damn, I'm just, I'm just dropping everything. Uh, we're gonna put you guys right there. So, yeah, as I mentioned before, these took a while to get here, but I'm really excited to open them up on camera with you guys and see my genuine reaction. I'm a little scared because the company... After I purchased them, I saw the reviews and some of them were not good, but hopefully they are. I mean, the customer service was really good. Oh my God, they come in bougie ass boxes. What is this? Crocodile boxes? I'm so confused. Oh my goodness. Um, I've got <laughs> candies and it says happy, yes or no. Um, yes, we're so glad. Tell your mom and your friends and then post a photo to Instagram. And then it says no, please email us at da 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 and let us know what's wrong. So that's really nice. Um, I hope that I'm satisfied. I really do because I ordered, I think, 500 of these. Okay, here's the return label in case they're not good. Yeah, these are really nice. Like, little boxes that they come in. Wow, this is this is actually looking very promising for a business that had bad reviews. Maybe they're not so bad. Maybe there was just some Karens online. Okay. Okay. Wow, these are packaged really nicely, you guys. We got bubble wrap and everything. Um, they're a little bit smaller than I thought. Okay, <laughs> these are really small. Did I order this size? I feel like every single time that I like I order from a company, I'm always like opening it with you guys. I'm like, this is not what I ordered. Um, okay, well, <laughs> here's the business cards. As you guys can see, it is my logo with this matte paper. Um, and then on this side right here, it says thepigroom.com because I am switching from Etsy to my own website. And then it has our Instagram and then it says your order made us popcorn. So I just wanted to get something super cute with our information on it. And I really do like these, but I just don't remember me ordering this size. These are so incredibly small, you guys. Like just for reference, like this is my palm. These are really small. I'm, I'm on my um, little sewing table right now they're two two inches by two inches like this is yeah it's not even it's not even three inches long okay um give me one second i'm actually going to uh, my phone's in there i'm gonna look at my email just to see exactly the size that i order because i just don't think that i ordered two inch business cards i mean they'll work i mean i'm really not mad at them i just i don't think i'll have to return them um but just for the sake of i guess double checking to make sure i really didn't i think i want to so give me one second and i will see if i got them guys i was right i ordered three by three inch business cards and they did not send me that they sent me way smaller of ones they're definitely not the ones that i ordered it says that the final card dimensions are going to be three inches by three inches and they're most definitely smaller. I'm like looking at my cutting table right now with my ruler and it's two and a half inches by 
two and a half inches. And it may seem like such a little discrepancy, but just having that extra half inch on both sides definitely makes more sense. I actually want to show you guys my stickers because the stickers are, they're bigger. And this is what they're supposed to be. I ordered, these are three by threes, and then these are business cards that I got. <laughs> so much smaller. Like I want them to make an impression and this, I feel like, doesn't... The sticker makes more of an impression than the actual business card. And I feel like this needs to more because this has all the info. So I'm going to email them back and just let them know because this is definitely way too small. I hope you guys enjoyed that little segment of me opening um, up those two packages. And I will talk to you guys later. Good morning, Caroline. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Oh, you guys flipped over your house? We got Miss Lennon right under here. <laughs> we got all the boys. Mr. Vision, hello. Everyone is anticipating their pellets. As you can probably tell, everyone's just waiting by their cage. So let's go ahead and actually plug in their lights. Also, excuse my voice, I literally just woke up. Then I have to put these lights right here because Toby loves to chew them. So I always have to make sure that they're out of his way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get in their pellets, top up their hay, and then I will talk to you guys in a bit. Alrighty guys, so I actually just got back, like I literally just walked into the door. Um, I was at my parents for a bit because they actually renovated our newest chicks, or I should say chickens because they've grown up so much since we last had them as chicks. Um, I upgraded their enclosure, so they went from a super small black container, which I knew, not even having experience with raising chickens that that was too small for them They just totally outgrew that within a few weeks and I upgraded their enclosure to about a two foot by six foot enclosure So they're gonna be living in that for the next month. So they are so much happier I'm actually gonna roll my Instagram story so you guys can see it in case you missed it um, So here is that so I'm doing this as a little surprise for my dad, but as you can see Here's our chicks. Well, no longer chicks, they're chickens. They're like almost full grown. Um, they have another like month in here. He did upgrade this, but it's still too small. So I went to Home Depot and purchased all of this materials to build them basically like a two foot by, I wanna say four and a half, five foot enclosure, much bigger than this. So I'm gonna show you guys, I guess the after. So here's the before and then here's the before too of the after. All right guys, took me literally no time at all for me and Andy. Here is the new coop. So as you guys could have saw before, oh, I can't flip this. Here's the, oh my God, it's so small compared to this. Here's the after, it's definitely larger than like five feet. I think it's about six. So the chickens are gonna be so happy. I've noticed them like fighting a lot more often, which is not gonna be good for when they like actually go outside. So this is gonna be great for them for the next month. The chickens are in. Guys, they look so much happier. Literally, I can't even, like, begin to compare this one to what it was before. Like, look how skinny this is. Compared to now this whole entire enclosure. Let me just step back so I can show you guys. Look how much more room they have. And it's much wider as well. And as you can see, they're just grazing on the bedding. I am so happy with this. Like... Oh my God, my dad and mom just came down. They were like, oh my God, this looks so much better. Our chickies are much happier now. So yes, chickens are much happier and I'm so happy I did that. It cost about $50 to actually make the pen, um, $50 for the PVC piping, and then my dad actually had the chicken wire. So it would have been a little bit more expensive if I had to purchase the chicken wire, but luckily he had it. So chickens are nice and happy. They literally perked up so much. I've never seen them so happy. They've always just been super scared of us and like very crazy. And also they love to pick on each other. And I could see why, because they were in such a small cage. Now they have room to run around, roost, spread out their wings, all kinds of things. So they are feeling much better. But yeah, I just walked into the door and I have two packages here. One from Amazon, which is unrelated to the pigs semi-related to like my business. And then one from Alyssa. I'm gonna save the best one for last. So let's go ahead and open this one up right here. So if you guys don't know, um, I'm not sure if I've actually mentioned it in one of my vlogs yet. I don't think so. Maybe it was an Instagram live I'm getting confused with, but I'm in the process of actually building a PC 
because I'm really trying to amplify my content for you guys and just using my MacBook Pro is not cutting anymore when it comes to editing because it's constantly dying on me and crashing. So I've got all the parts for my PC and then I had to order a few more and then I'm waiting on one more part which is the motherboard which is like the main component of getting everything running. Um, so that's the last final piece until I can actually start building it. Here I have just an 8 gigabyte flash drive because I need to upload Windows to this. Um, you guys, this may or may not make sense to you guys, but it does to me. Um, so I got this. And then I also got some thermal paste, as you can see right here, for my CPU so it doesn't overheat. I'm like totally blanking on the terminology of this, but one of the parts, the GPU, the CPU, there's so many letters that I don't know in numbers. Um, it's It already has thermal paste on it, but just in case I ruin it, I have some extra one and it's always good to have on hand. And then this is, oh, this is just normal black zip ties just for cable management in the back to make it look a lot nicer. So I just got these mini zip ties. These were actually supposed to come yesterday, but Amazon's shipping has been all over the place. So everything's like super delayed. Oh, this is a lot. How much is this actually? This is 200 pieces. I probably won't need this many, um, but just 200 plain little black zip ties. So these are definitely going to come into hands. So let's move on to our more exciting package right here. Um, so if you guys don't know, Alyssa actually has an Etsy store called Weeks and Witches. She has this whole entire theme when it comes to her Etsy store, which is very spooky and Halloween-y, but has her own twist to it, making it kind of more elevated, which I really do like. But can we just talk about this packaging first? Like this is one of the most stunning poly mailers ever. Alyssa lucked out with getting these really gorgeous ones with like moons and all the other planets and stars and and this just actually reminds me of the horoscope pattern, which is my absolute favorite. So figures why I love it so much, but I'm just going to actually open this up. I do know what she sent me, if I am correct. So this isn't too much of a surprise, um, but I'm sure I will uh, still be shook no matter what. So I actually saw her packing these live on Instagram. So I saw her packaging already, but oh my God. She has a little smudge in here. You guys probably can't see it. Um, but here it is right here. So she just has the ribbon with some really cute Halloween like festival stickers. So we've got this tree and then a witch who's like brewing her little potions. So I'm super excited to crack into this. And then also the uh, cobweb green uh, ribbon on the top. She actually recently added another new item to her store, which is crocheted guinea pigs. So what she's doing is actually making her own guinea pigs into crochet form, like little plushies. So all of them are replicas of her own pigs. So if you guys have like any favorite pigs of hers, you can go ahead and purchase your own, like little Kevin, little Noodle, whatever the case may be. But she actually made two like test ones that didn't end up actually looking like any of her pigs. And they actually ended up looking like me and Autumn's pigs. So I was like, this looks exactly like Kyle. So please, I like want this like so badly. Um, so we did actually a little bit of a gift exchange. I actually hooked her up with a custom liner and some other handmade items. And she sent me one of her little uh, handmade keychains. So let me go ahead and actually open this up. I'm really happy that she went with also this really sturdy box as well. So that way nothing gets squished because USPS can be very crazy, especially when it comes to like handmade items like they'll just like treat it not really well so i'm really glad to know that it came protected so as soon as i open the box as you can see we have her business card and also sticker which just like flew away <laughs> fitting. So it's just this nice little Weeks and Witches sticker. Super nice quality, super thick. I definitely am going to place this somewhere. I don't actually have a place that I have in the pig room where I put stickers, so I'm going to have to find a spot to put this. Um, right now I have it all in my sewing machine, but I'm looking to cover them with my own pigs. But I'll probably put this maybe on like one of my hay bins or something. Then we have her little business card right here, which is like super cute. So if you guys want to check her out, I'll actually leave her like info on the screen here and there. So you guys can go ahead and purchase your own things. She also makes name tags as well, um, all hand painted. So so I'm really, really uh, excited to see kind of where her shop goes because it's definitely going to be successful from here on out. Oh my goodness. You can see Kyle like peeking through the little bushes, the little, uh, what's this called? Crinkle paper. Oh my goodness. This is literally Kyle. This is literally Kyle. Holy crap. These feel so nice too, like high quality, like super, super thick. Like these could actually go on keys and they would actually like not get destroyed. Holy crap. I actually wasn't expecting them to be like this 
sturdy for keychain. This is crazy. So here it is right here. So if you guys know, I'm actually going to grab her so you guys can like basically compare contrast. But here is what I like to call the Kyle keychain. So this looks exactly like Kyle. I'm not sure if this was the first or second one that she did, but here it is. Super durable keychain as well. So you guys can obviously hang this on keys if you want to, or just to keep it, you know, more safe. I'm probably just going to like hang it up maybe on a hook or something near the cage, obviously where they can't access it. But oh my goodness, it's literally the most cutest thing with the little nose in the mouth. Oh my God. Okay, so here we have Miss Kyle right here. Um, she's actually been acting a little bit different because Caroline has been picking on all the pigs lately and I think they're kind of getting sick of it. This cage upgrade is definitely needed and I definitely want to give them more space, but she's fine nonetheless. I've just been noticing that Caroline's been picking on her a lot more and she's really been sick of it. So hopefully that stops after the cage renovation. So I just wanted to do kind of like a side-by-side -side, um, of Kyle and the keychain. Like you cannot tell me, like where did Kyle go? Is this Kyle? Or is this Kyle? Like, this is literally the exact <laughs> same thing. Oh my goodness. Literally, I think Kyle's like more shook at the fact that she's like looking at herself. Is this you? Is that you? <laughs> Alyssa, thank you so much. This is literally the cutest thing ever. Like, you definitely hit the nail on the head with actually replicating Kyle so well. Um, so again, you guys, um, please make sure to go check out Alyssa's store. She is going to be obviously doing more launches in the future. Right now she's sold out and we're also on strike as well. Uh, this vlog probably actually won't be posted until after the strike, um, but I'm sure Etsy is still keeping that transaction fee, which unfortunately sucks, but what are you gonna do? So yes, I will leave all of her info down below so you guys can go ahead and check out all the items that she offers and if you guys wanna get things of your own. But yeah, thank you, Alyssa, so much. Um, and also, Kyle, thanks you as well. Good morning, you guys. I literally am just now realizing that this entire vlog has basically been me like either unboxing stuff or just at my desk. So I apologize for the lack of actual pigs in this vlog. I may try and think of doing something at the end of this where you guys can kind of, you know, see the pigs at least. I show them off a couple times, but like not extensively. So this is more of like kind of, a, I guess, like a business oriented like vlog. Sorry if you guys are not interested in this kind of stuff, but I do like showing this side of my, I guess, the pig room, my life, because a huge part of the pig room is actually my business. And kind of every day I am doing business stuff with sewing, you know, unboxing packages, ordering stuff, building things, all kinds of stuff. So that kind of just comes with the territory of you guys being a part of this. Right now, I am currently just getting ready to actually make a custom liner for one of my customers. I have about 15 to do in total, so a lot of work to do. I think I'm actually gonna make three today. I would love to make a good amount, maybe even more, just to get everyone's orders out to them as soon as possible. So I'm going to be at the sewing machine for the rest of the day. I have my light here because it is very dark over here. I got my new mushroom light from Ikea. It's so cute. You guys probably can't like see the details, but um, it's a really nice like porcelain glass. Um, I got my sewing machine right here. I'm actually gonna give you guys a whole like office space tour very, very soon. Actually, when I build my PC, which should be within the next week, but um, I got my new desk and it is literally the most luxurious and nicest thing ever. It's plenty of space. Before I was sewing on this like super small table and had no room, but now I have a huge tabletop to actually do liners, making my life a lot easier. So I'm really happy that I went with this desk in particular because it's not only made for, you know, gaming and PC stuff, but also a really good sewing table. Right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and probably just work on this liner, may jump on live for a little bit, and then I will talk to you guys in a bit.
going strong over here. Um, I finished one liner, as I showed you guys before, for one customer, she just ordered one. And then this one right here is going to be two two by fours in this print with the reverse side of, I think you wanna call this royal, not royal blue, some kind of blue, I forget. It's a slightly like lighter shade, um, but super pretty. So again, like I mentioned before, I'm just going to be working on this. So I'm gonna make these two, make one more after this. Um, but before I make that one, after I finish these two, I'm gonna go say hi to the piggies, top up their hay and show you guys them as well. So yeah, let's time lap this and get it done. finished making this liner I just kind of wanted to sit down and talk with you guys about a recent occurrence of something that has happened to me a couple days ago if you guys follow me on Instagram you probably know this whole entire story but I just wanted to share it with someone who may have missed it or missed the live um, explaining the whole entire situation and why it happened I was actually supposed to rescue what was supposed to be one guinea pig but turned out to be eight on Saturday I had one of my friends, Kristen, actually send me this listing. Um, she was browsing on Guinea Pig Finder and came across this one that was actually in my state. So she sent it to me and she was like, hey, like, is there anything you could possibly do? Like, he looks like he's in really bad shape. He doesn't look happy. He looks like he needs a better place to be. So, you know, as a person that I am, obviously I got a lot on my hands, but whatever the case may be, especially when it comes to uh, guinea pigs in really bad situations, I will step in if I find it necessary. And this was one of those cases. So I clicked on the listing that Kristen had sent me and he looked so incredibly sad. Like you could just see nothing behind his eyes, depression, sadness, loneliness, all kinds of negative emotions. And also after looking at him more, I had noticed that he not only had really bad poop stuck to the bottom of his paws, but he also had a missing toe. Now, I don't know why that is. I don't know what the case may be. Maybe they clipped it too short and cut off almost practically the whole toe by accident, but it looked like he was missing a toe, which he was. I reached out to the person. I said, hey, is this is this pig still available? I'll obviously pop up photos on the screen um, so you guys can see, and luckily he was. So I was like, this is awesome. And she had ended up sending me more photos and videos of the pig because when it comes to actually rescuing guinea pigs, I really like to make sure that the situation that they're currently in is what I kind of define as a rescue situation. I don't wanna go out and rescue any pig that's in a fine, okay home, really great home for that matter. I think it's a much better thing to just take an animal that is being neglected, abused, whatever the case may be, and taking it into a better one. I feel like that's a much better situation. And I also don't wanna take in pigs who already have good homes. I'm it's just that the owners don't have time for them. I just really want to take in pigs who are coming from really bad situations. And again, this was one of those cases. So she sent me more videos and photos of this pig and it was bad. It was really bad and she sent me a video and there was actually another pig inside of this pet store cage with him. And it was strange because there was only a listing for the male, the one, the one pig. So I was like, oh, is there another guinea pig available for adoption? I see another one. And she said, yes, we actually have eight. So it turned out to be uh, one, one male, three females and four babies. Three of the guinea pigs were living in a pet store cage, awful bedding, super dirty, barely any food didn't see a water bottle, no hay, and it was a male and two females. And then in the other pet store cage, in just as bad of condition, was a female who's the mom of the four babies. You know, right off the bat, the cages are way too small. And then on top of that, the living conditions and the sanitariness of them were just very, very poor. So I immediately felt awful for these animals. So I said, you know what, this this could be a situation that I can, I can involve myself in and really help out. So I jumped on live 
and I decided that I wanted to actually create a GoFundMe for this because what turned out to be one, which is definitely a situation that I could handle financially and also emotionally, then turning out to be eight, I was like, I need some help here. So I decided to reach out to my community, the guinea pig community, you guys, and create this GoFundMe to actually raise donations to rescue these animals. So things like covering uh, transportation, cage items, water bottles, food, hay, vet visits, and health checks and all that kind of stuff, and any other necessary budgets to get these pigs uh, to full health because they definitely were not on first glance. So fast forward and we had gotten up to, I think about $300 in donations. Um, and I was really, really excited for this because it was going to be happening within two days. I found out about this whole pig on a Thursday and then I was planning on rescuing them on Saturday. So within about, I wanna say an hour, to an hour and a half, not long at all, I get a call from the person who, you know, put these pigs up for adoption. And she asked me, she's like, hey, did you create a GoFundMe? And in the back of my mind, I'm like, how does this person know that I created a GoFundMe? It was, it's been less than an hour, hour and a half. And I asked her and I, she was like, oh, uh, one of my, one of my, someone told me, one of my friends told me. And I immediately, like my heart just sank because I was like, there's a person out there that had seen this GoFundMe, attended my live, whatever the case may be, knew about this rescue situation, then found the listing on guineapigfinder.com, reached out to that owner, that phone number, and then told them that I was doing this GoFundMe to basically rescue the pig. And if you guys know anything about uh, rescue situations, it's always easiest to approach them as open, calm, and respectful as possible because you don't want to turn away, you know, the person who has these animals in their care. You want to do everything that you possibly can and keep it very low, under the radar, so that way, you know, nothing happens and they're like, no, what, you're not actually going to rescue these pigs. My heart sank because I, I, I considered that to be a possibility of this person being like, why would you need to rescue my pigs? Like, they're in great condition. And, you know, obviously to anyone, you could just look at them and understand that they're not in the best of care. I got really, really worried, but I explained to her, you know, this is my job, this is what I do. I take them to get their health checks at the vet. You know, it's expensive, it's not cheap, especially where I go. It's just protocol when it comes to rescuing guinea pigs. And she did hear me out, and luckily I had Andy there because one of the members of this rescue situation only spoke Spanish, and my friend Andy speaks fluent Spanish. So we were on the phone with her um, and the other person for about, I wanna say, a half hour to 45 minutes on Facebook time and also the phone. You know, we explained to them and broke it down why we're doing this whole GoFundMe, really trying to convince them that we're really great people, we're trying to look after your pigs, and they're going to be in the best of care, you know, once we take them. So after FaceTiming them for a half hour, all was good, we scheduled the meeting, everything. Then I start to receive more concerning texts from this owner being like, you know, you expose my phone number and my address online, um, which if you guys don't know, on Guinea Pig Finder, if you are looking to put up a pet for adoption and to have someone rescue that pet, you put your phone number and your address. It's public public domain. It's, it's, it's you are putting your public information out there, but I, I didn't ever show the phone number or the information because I specifically didn't want to have people, other people involved or reaching out to this person. Someone went out of their way to go ahead and ruin this, this rescue for me. And that is ultimately what happened because this person, um, had watched my live and saw, you know, my whole entire live about showing the, the care that they were in, calling them bad owners and criticizing them. And you know what? I have to stand by everything that that I say and I will continue to stand by everything that I say especially when it involves live animals and my my my, my babies, my, my favorite animals ever, guinea pigs. If I see bad care, I'm going to say it's bad care. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. I'm not gonna, you know, handle it gently or lightly. This is by far one of the worst situations that I've ever seen guinea pigs in. Almost meets equally just as bad as Leon and Mr. Styles. Sanitation wise, which there was none whatsoever, just cleanliness, non-existent. This was definitely, it definitely takes the cake. So I, I, the, the rescue failed because someone had basically reached out to this person telling her that I was creating a GoFundMe. She got my info, she saw what I was saying about them, and ultimately she wanted nothing to do with me. And I got really, really, really disappointed in the whole situation because I don't know who exposed me. You know, I don't know who gave it away. Can I say I was shocked? No, uh, because I actually had some drama arise, you know, the week of. So there was someone out there that decided that they wanted to ruin this situation. And it goes so much further beyond trying to hurt me, but it's the fact that you now, this person, out there, whoever it may be, cost the lives of eight guinea pigs, especially the babies, because, you know, they have a full life ahead of them, and to just, like, 
completely take that away for them and pull the rug under their feet is just really, really, really disappointing. Yeah, I mean, I, I would have loved to make this whole video on this rescue situation by far one of the worst I've seen and show it off to you guys in the whole entire process about what is the true reality of what people are putting their guinea pigs in and how they're basically caring for them, caring for them, because it's great to have exposure to not only the good stuff, but also equally the bad stuff. You know, that's the whole point of Saskia's videos is when she like does these whole rescue situations and you're seeing where they're coming from. Like it, it is a really great experience to have because you know, it's, it's the good and the bad. Both are equally important. So that was my whole purpose of wanting to save these little babies and it's unfortunate that it didn't happen. So I had decided of basically making a vouch for myself of never approaching another rescue situation in this way and making it so easy for someone to find their information of the, the pigs that I was basically going to rescue because it is going to interfere with my my rescue mission, my investigation, if you will. And I don't want to risk it because again, you know, pigs lives are on the line and ultimately that is what I, I care for. That's my job. And the moment that that is tainted is the moment that I potentially lose that job to do. It had seemed like it was so so pent up all of this energy to go you know through with this rescue and for it to be shot down in literally less than like two hours it had literally drained my entire soul that that day that night I was you know I had to do a bunch of stuff sew a bunch of things work on like editing and stuff like that I legit could not do anything I just totally shut down and it's unfortunate because it's 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 a situation that I was no longer able to do and help pigs out so again going forward when it comes to rescue situations because I'm sure there will be more I will obviously approach these things a lot differently. It's just a shame because this whole rescue situation was supposed to be like, you know, for the community, by the community. Like everyone really pitched in. I think we raised almost like $650. So it was really going to happen. Um, and just to have that shot down and taken away from not just me, but all of us, it was really disappointing. But you know what? Lessons have been learned through this experience. Um, and I definitely know how to approach another situation like this in the future. And I know what to do better. Supposedly some of the pigs went to new homes, hopefully good ones. You know, that's just, that's the end of that. That's the end of the story. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what else to say. I'm just more baffled at the fact that there's someone out there that wanted to ruin this entire great thing that I was doing. But again, like I mentioned before, there's going to be many cases that arise in the future. You know, I'm always on Craigslist, always on guinea pig finder really trying to see what other situations other guinea pigs are in so i'm sure you know one of these days i will come across a situation equally as worse maybe even way worse and we'll just do this all over again but the right way and protecting myself the, the best way because if it was to happen again i'd be like jesus jesus christ this is this is not this is not good but luckily i think i would i would know what to do going forward but this is the kind of the stuff that happens with being you know in this community especially with someone with so much influence and ha has a you know a fan base watching them it can get hard at times um, and I'm learning to try and protect myself and kind of navigate through this new way of living for me because I've never had this many people watching me at once, all these eyes on me. I can definitely say, you know, that I get more support than hate, um, but that is those hate comments or people that directly and physically do something to hurt me, that's when I, they, they take it a step further and I'm like, that doesn't feel good or this is a little bit concerning. Um, but hopefully that never happens again, but again, partly me and I know how to approach that differently. That's my little story. Um, I hope you guys kind of gain some insight as to that whole fiasco if you missed it. Um, but I'm gonna go get back to sewing. I'm just pinning this liner to do the inseam and then I will talk to you guys later. All right guys, so I just finished one of the liners. So here it is right here. So we've got this very pretty like pastel tie-dye galaxy vibe with the reverse side of like almost like a lighter teal color. It matches like perfectly. But here is one liner done. I have one more to make. Seriously, with every single liner that I make, I wanna keep it for myself. I am still trying to get around to making the video where I make Make all my own custom liners and all kinds of like hidey houses, pee pads, all kinds of things. But I'm so focused on making your guys' orders. Soon enough, I will have a fresh set of liners for all of my piggies because I would re really like to just like amplify my own stuff and like really make it super cute because I'm running off of stuff that I made like in the very beginning of when I first started sewing. So I'm definitely anticipating that, but I'm happy to make your guys' piggies happy first. So here we have another liner going out to another customer. Again, like I mentioned before, I have another one that I'm making of this exact kind and then I'll get it all packaged up and shipped out to her tomorrow. I am incredibly hungry, so I'm definitely going to take a short break before I begin doing the next one. But before we do that, let's go ahead and say hi to the piggies. Hi, pigs. Hello. Hi, Mr. Joey's. Oh, Jojo's. You want your little chin rub? Jojo loves his little chin rubs. Can never beat that on him. He is a sucker for a good chin rub, as you can see. <laughs> he is so freaking cute. Hi. Look at those little lips. Look at those little lips. Are you talking? Yes? 
Yes, I'm talking. What's your name? Jojo. <laughs> Here we have Miss Kyle, who is just hanging in her piggy bunk bed with Caroline, the bully. As you can tell, she keeps running away from her because she is just, she's picking on everyone. I don't know why. It's funny because when I built this cage, I was like, this is the most massive cage ever. But having had it now for a couple months, I'm like, it seems smaller to me now. So I'm really anticipating doing this entire renovation where I'm actually extending this cage by about 12 square feet. So it's going to be three grids wide and then come to an L shape. And it's going to stop right before the door. Here we have Miss Erin snacking on her pellets. I think Caroline moves into that little Timothy house. And then we've got Teddy right inside of her house, who's just munching on some hay. Oop. And we got Wanda, who has decided to now come out. And then we have Miss Lennon over here. Hi, Len. She actually needs her nails clipped very badly. They're very, very long. But here she is, snacking away with her cage mate, Willow. <laughs> and who do we have? Oh, Oh my goodness. Really, Toby? He loves knocking off this roof. And I don't know why. Keep it like that, bud. What do we have down here? We got Vision over there. We got Ezra over there. Uh, Ashton is gnawing away on the bars to try and get to Jojo. I would love for him to have been a candidate to get neutered and be with girls. But again, he is very aggressive and it just worries me. I don't know, maybe doing a whole cage extension and switching things up will be good for him. And just having him have new neighbors um, will just get him to stop doing that. But I do find him, he looks a little bit stressed out more than the other pigs. So yeah, I'll have to figure out what I can do with him. Then we got our other boys over here. Styles just went into his house. There is a Leon on his little bed from Walmart. They love that thing. Hi. And then we got Kai who's just drinking away over here. And our crazy boy, Winston. He is my little crazy man. You want to come out, don't you? I know you do. Not not right now. I, Daddy's got to work. So that's how all the piggies are doing right now. She's eyeballing me. I actually got to do a bunch of laundry tonight. And I have some right there. But not too bad, actually. The floor is looking actually relatively clean, which is a first. So guys, I think this is where I'm going to end this vlog. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching. For the rest of the night, I'm literally just going to be working on orders and sewing, so it's just going to get very repetitive. So I'm going to go ahead and just focus on that without vlogging, uh, but I do definitely think I got enough sewing footage for you guys to enjoy. Hopefully this video was exciting. Again, it was a lot of like business oriented stuff, but I know that a lot of you guys do like that stuff according to my live when I asked you. So that makes me feel really, really good in knowing that you guys actually enjoy these types of videos. Please make sure to give this video a, a big thumbs up and also subscribe for more videos every single week or even twice a week depending upon the day and how busy I am. Sometimes I do once a week, sometimes I do twice a week. And until then, I hope you and your piggies are happy, safe, and healthy. Bye guys!